Combining and merging tables through joins is incredibly useful for data science, as it enables us to unlock valuable insights within complex datasets. While joining tables is usually performed using SQL, this approach comes with numerous limitations. Thus, in this video, we'll explore how the intuitive syntax of dplyr can revolutionize our ability to join tables, taking our skills to a whole new level of efficiency and flexibility. There are two types of joins, mutating and filtering. Let's begin with the four mutating joins. The inner join is the most intuitive. It finds identical columns, keeps just one of them, adds all not matching columns behind it, and ignores the rest. One useful example of applying in a join is when you have two datasets. Let's say a customer's dataset and an orders dataset. Both datasets have a common column, such as customer ID, which serves as a unique identifier for each customer. Such unique identifier is often called key column. By performing an inner join on the customer ID column, you can merge the two datasets based on matching customer IDs. This operation allows you to create a consolidated dataset that contains information for both datasets, but only for customers who have placed orders. In other words, it filters out any customers who have not made any purchases. This merged dataset can be valuable for analyzing customer behavior, understanding purchasing patterns, or conducting targeted marketing campaigns to specific customer segments. But we have to be very careful here. The inner join only keeps observations from one table that have perfectly matching values in the other table. If we take our X and Y tables, we'll see that only the first row, 1A, is kept, while 1B and 2A from table X have no match in table Y, and the 2B from table Y has no match in table X. And that's the most important property of an inner join. Unmatched rows in either table are not included in the result. This means that generally inner joins are not appropriate in most analysis because it is too easy to lose observations. If you want to keep all the observations from X or from Y or from both tables, we need to apply outer joins. And there are three of them. Left join keeps all observations from the left table. Right join keeps all observations from the right table and full join keeps all observations from both tables. While the inner join may be the most intuitive, it is the left join that proves to be most commonly employed join in practice, and actually the most useful for several reasons. First, if one table is more important than other, left joins allow us to preserve all the observations from the left table even if there are no matches in the right table. This ensures that no important data is lost during merging. Secondly, the new data from the right table that corresponds to the matching observations in the left table is added. And finally, left joins highlight any discrepancies or mismatches between the tables being joined. When a left join introduces empty values, such as NA, for unmatched observations, it serves as an indicator of data inconsistencies or missing values. Detecting these mismatches early on is crucial for ensuring data integrity and avoiding erroneous conclusions. Let's consider the same example where you have two tables, one containing customer information and another containing purchase history. Here, we want to merge the two tables using a left join to retain all customer information while incorporating relevant purchase data. Particularly, customers 1 and 2 had matching records in both tables, so their purchase information was included into the final table. In contrast, customer 3, who had no corresponding record in the purchase history table, resulted in no values for the purchase-related columns. The buy argument in the left join command is crucial. 
because it specifies columns that serve as the matching criterion between two tables being joined. It determines how the rows from each table will be matched and merged. If the by argument is not provided, the left join command finds identical columns in both tables and uses them all by default. However, that could result in incorrect matches or cause errors during the merging process if columns having the same information named differently. Therefore, it is crucial to specify the column names to ensure accurate and meaningful results in the merged table. For example, let's left join T1 and T2 based on the common ID slash identifier column. In the first case, when the by argument is not specified, the left join command attempts to automatically match the columns. However, since the columns have different names, ID versus identifier, the join does not work because our tables have no common variables. But if the correct by argument is used, specifying that the ID column from T1 corresponds to the identifier column from T2, left join works properly. Right join works similarly to the left join by retaining all observations from the right table. In fact, in many cases, a right join can be replaced by a left join by reversing the table order. In this way, you can achieve the same outcome and retain the same information. So, to be honest, we can ignore right join. But we can't ignore the full join. And here is why. Full joins are extremely useful due to their ability to retain all records from both tables, even if there are mismatches or missing values. In this way, full joins ensure that no data is lost during the merging process, which is crucial for thorough data analysis and decision making. Besides, full joins help to identify and investigate inconsistencies and gaps between the data sets leading to better data quality and more complete data for analysis. Compared to inner join that retains only two matching rows, and compared to left join and right join that retain only three rows, the full join combines all four records from both tables, incorporating NA values in the absence of matches. A full join seamlessly combines the functionalities of both left and right joins, offering a comprehensive merging approach. However, not everything is rosy here. While returning every mismatch can help identify inconsistencies between tables and potentially fill gaps using advanced machine learning techniques, it can also pose a significant challenge. The sheer volume of new observations can quickly become overwhelming. In large and complex datasets, which are often the norm, and when both tables contain NAs from the very beginning, distinguishing between original NAs and the new NAs becomes nearly impossible. This creates a dangerous situation where you might unknowingly proceed with analysis and produce unrealistic results. Therefore, despite the benefits of joins, be very careful and always double-check the output. Filtering joins affect only the rows or observations, not the columns or variables. There are two kinds of filtering joins, semi-join and anti-join. Semi-joins help identify and keep matching records between two tables while retaining only the columns from the first or left table. The inner join might look similar, but it would keep columns from both tables. By keeping only the desired columns from the left table, semi-joins help to reduce data complexity and focus on the essential information needed for analysis. In other words, they filter and extract relevant records, resulting in a more concise and targeted dataset. Anti-joins are used to exclude records that match between two tables, essentially filtering out the common observations. An anti-join retains only unmatched rows, 
making it useful for identifying discrepancies between tables. And if the anti-join returns no results, it's actually a good thing. Now that you have your final table in the desired structure, you probably want to explore and visualize your data, aren't you? If you're looking for a comprehensive video that will teach you how to efficiently explore all the aspects of your data you see on the screen right now, then you definitely don't want to miss out on this one.